Uh, what's your favorite conspiracy? Honestly, I feel like it's hard to choose. I feel like they all kind of like <laughs> tie together. But one that I was looking into a lot more recently was the Titanic. As you saw what I was saying on that before. With mm-hmm. uh, There's just a lot of things that tie together that don't really make sense. First of all, in 1898, 14 years before the Titanic sank, there was a book published called The Wreck of the Titan, very similar name to Titanic. And if you read the book, I didn't read it, but I read a <laughs> summary of the book. The Titan is the largest cruise liner in the world at the time. It's called Unsinkable. It does sink by striking an iceberg. It sinks in the North Atlantic Sea on an April night, and it was on its maiden voyage from uh, Southampton to New York City. All of those things are consistent with the Titanic, which is a little weird. I don't have an explanation for why these things line up, but that's the first weird thing. But there's there's a lot of other stuff. So you got you got J.P. Morgan, who his company financed the company that owned the Titanic, which was the International Mercantile Marine Company, IMM. Mm-hmm. And they 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 created the Titanic and the Olympic, which were s- sister ships. And the Olympic, before 1912, got into all sorts of crashes, and it basically couldn't be insured, and it, and it wasn't even legal for them to take the Olympic out until it was repaired. So J.P. Morgan, who owned this, owned both these ships, right before the Titanic goes to, to leave port, he doesn't go on the boat, and he, let, he lets the Titanic go, and then we all know what happens. But some conspiracies claim that J.P. Morgan purposely didn't go on and had the boats switched and had all the – because they were twin ships. So if he had the Olympic, which was already a compromised Mm. boat, going out to sink, obviously he wouldn't want to be on it. And if he said it was the Titanic instead, he'd be able to collect the insurance money. And he did take out a big insurance policy on the Titanic right before. And on top of that – J.P. Morgan had a lot of rivals that were on this boat. So J.P. Morgan was one of the five families that was there for the founding of the Federal Reserve, specifically the Rothschilds, J.P. Morgan, Rockefeller, the Aldrich family, and the Warburg family. But J.P. Morgan, owning the Titanic, you know, he, he's got a lot of hands on this one. And John Jacob Astor and uh, what's the other guy's name? Benjamin Guggenheim. Those two were very rich, prominent businessmen in America who both opposed the creation of the Federal Reserve, both of which died on the Titanic. And to tie it all together, Joseph G. Bruce, in the 1950s on his deathbed, admitted that he, when he was, because he worked for the the shipyard that built both the Titanic and uh, and the Olympic, and he admitted that he was one of the people hired to make the switch and that he was given death threats if he spoke out about it, but he said something on his deathbed. Wow. A lot of interesting stuff. Yeah, so J.P. Morgan, which company's still around today uh, quite a bit, he had a lot of enemies, and he wanted to get rid of them, obviously, so he sent them on to the Titanic, his boat. To go crash. And it was a two for one, too, because he also got the insurance money basically to make up for all the crashes the Olympic had. Right. That's pretty crazy. Why don't people know about this? Mostly because... Do you want to talk into the mic? You're it's good. been very romanticized, <laughs> the whole story. I mean, like, in, in the 80s, you know, there was that whole Titanic movie. But also, like... There wasn't the internet, so information wasn't going to flow around as quickly. Whereas today, we can we can tie all these things together. If someone tied all these things together back then, they would have had to, first of all, they'd have to like consult a lot of books and like legal papers and things like that. That now you can just have a click of a button away. Mm-hmm. You know, n- someone might not be able to be like, oh, John Jacob Astor and. And Benjamin Guggenheim, they're both against the Federal Reserve, and they're the biggest enemies of it besides Henry Ford. 
and they both died on the Titanic. And the Titanic was owned by J.P. Morgan, who canceled last second to go on the Titanic. And then also J.P. Morgan uh, also, it was in his financial interest anyways to sink this boat. And people like to say, oh, no one would, no one would kill people like that. But throughout history, there's example after example of people that trade human life for power. Yeah, it's one of the Hitler, one of the truths. Hitler's one of them. You know, you got Alexander the Great. You could argue Napoleon. Like, there's a, there's a lot of people in history that very obviously cared more about power than they cared about human life. 